What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to create sticky blocks inside of Squarespace. Now, before we jump into Squarespace, I really wanna illustrate how position sticky works. So I'm here in CodePen and I just wanna cover my setup that I have so far. So I have a container and a block element. So I've made the container have a dark gray background. It has a padding of 50 pixels to give it a little space around the edges and it's 200 pixels high. And then I have a block element inside. So this element has a class of block and you can see here I'm styling the element it's 100 by 100 pixels with a red background. Now down below, we don't have to worry about this. I just needed to add more content in down below. That way I could keep scrolling down the page. So I have some styling here for that section, which doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hide this content anyway. All we care about for this demo is the container and then the block element inside of it. So that's all you need for position sticky. To make something sticky, you just need an element and then you need it to be in some container. So um, again, you can notice that the height of the container is twice as tall as the height of the block, which means there's available space down here. Now, if I scroll as normal, you can see it just scrolls with the rest of the content up the page. But if I give it a position of sticky, and then I have to give it a top value as well. And this is the top offset or how much you want it to be offset when it sticks to the top of the window. So I'm putting zero. So now as we scroll down, you can see it's fixed to the top of the window as I scroll down and it's an offset of zero pixels, which means it's flush with the top of the screen. And then once it reaches the bottom of the container, it starts scrolling up with the rest of the content. Now you might be thinking, hey, but it's not actually at the bottom. Well, remember we have 50 pixels of padding. So if I were to remove the 50 pixels of padding, you can see that you know, it's getting to the bottom of the container and then scrolling with the rest of the content. It's just kind of easier to see that happening when there's padding. Now you can also pass a different top value. So let's say maybe um, I have 50 pixels of padding. So instead of having it scroll up and then reaching the top of the window and being fixed, Maybe I want to have the top offset be 50 pixels and that way it just starts fixed and it'll just immediately start scrolling down the page. So uh, now, as soon as I start scrolling, you can see because it's uh, an offset of 50 pixels from the top of the screen, it just immediately is sticky and then reaches the bottom and starts scrolling. So it's a really powerful tool, especially when you have multiple elements in a section you can just make one of them sticky and that way they're always present as you scroll down the screen. So jumping into Squarespace, I wanna show you how to make blocks sticky. So if we edit the page, I just wanna show you the setup of this section. So I have a text block on the left and then I have all of my services on the right, but you can see there's just a ton of content here on the right. And as you scroll down the page, you're just left with a big empty blank spot on the left here. So it would be way better if this text block was sticky in this section and that way it'll just, you'll always see that our services is present on the left as you scroll through the services on the right. So the way that we can do that is if we right click on the section and click inspect, that'll bring up our Chrome inspect tools. And uh, if I find our fluid engine container, which is this one here. So if I close it and then toggle it open, you can see we have our blocks inside. So if, let me toggle closed that block. So we have two blocks in this section. We have this first block here, which is our services title. And then we have this FE block and FE stands for fluid engine. So this is a fluid engine block. And then here we have our text block on the right. So remember, we just need a child parent relationship. So how we had a block inside of a container you can see that Squarespace structures it with blocks inside of a container. So if we wanna make this block sticky, all we have to do is target this unique fe-block-ue, it'll be a long string of letters and numbers. This is the class that we wanna target. And this class is unique, it's specific to this one element. So I'm gonna copy that class. Let me toggle on my handy Chrome extension to make this CSS a little bit bigger and easier for you to notice. So uh, we target classes with a period in CSS. 
and then I'll paste in that class, open up some curly brackets, and now I can write my CSS in here. So I'll give it a position of sticky, and then I'll give it a top offset of zero for now. So let me save that. And now as we scroll down the page, as this block gets to the top of the window, it's fixed and it's sticky until it gets to the bottom of the section and then it starts scrolling again. So that's how we can do sticky blocks in Squarespace. Again, um, you probably don't want it to be all the way at the top of the window. You probably want a little bit of offset. So maybe you want to do something like 100 pixels, maybe something like that. So now as I scroll up, you can see it's offset and it's not going all the way to the top of the screen. So um, important things to note is that uh, let's say I were to remove this content, you need extra space below the block. Um, so if I were to remove all the extra space there and save that and exit, You need extra space in the section in order for that item to be sticky. So like in this demo, for example, our container is twice as tall as our block. If we were to remove the block height, and that way the container is just simply determined by the content, um, then there's no extra space for this block to be sticky in. So it's really important that you have extra space, that the section is much taller than the singular block in that section. So like in order to get this block to be sticky, all I would have to do is just add more extra rows here. And then if I save and hit exit, now there's more available space for this block to be sticky in. So you can see it actually sticks to the top of the screen again. So if you're not seeing your block be sticky, make sure you have extra available space for it to be sticky in. And another reason that it might not be sticky is if any parent element has an overflow of hidden, so for example, one common thing to do is if there's, for some reason, content is overflowing, you'll get a horizontal scroll bar if content is overflowing on the X axis. And so one thing people do is like on the site wrapper or even on the page. Um, so here's the page. They'll add an overflow X of hidden. So let me do that real quick. Hashtag page overflow X of hidden. But the issue now is our sticky block won't scroll if any parent element has an overflow X of hidden. And because our block content is inside of the page container, it doesn't work. So you just have to make sure that, you know, none of the parent elements on that page have an overflow of hidden. You have to make sure that there's available space for that block to be sticky in. And as long as those criteria are met, then you'll see your block be sticky in the section. Now I had previously deleted my text block, so I've added in some warm ipsum here so I can show you what it looks like on mobile. So if we go down to mobile view, you'll see that as you scroll, the block is still sticky and it's overlaying the content, which is not what we want. So if you wanna turn off your sticky block for mobile in the custom CSS window, I'll come up above the class and I'm gonna write at media screen and min width, and I'm gonna give it a min width of 768 pixels because that's one pixel above the mobile breakpoint. And that way this CSS will only apply on screen sizes greater than mobile. And so that way when we're on mobile, we don't see the sticky block, but when we're on desktop, we do. Now, one other thing you might've noticed is that when we're in edit mode, when you have a top offset that's greater than zero, you'll see that the block, even though it's mapped to these first two rows, it's appearing offset by whatever amount you set. So in my case, it's appearing offset by 100 pixels. So we want to turn off the sticky CSS when the site is in edit mode. And luckily, we can do that. If we right click and inspect the page, the body gets a class of SQS edit mode active when the editor is active. So what we can do to exclude our CSS when the editor is active is to write body and then not and target that class, SQS edit mode active. Then I'll close the parentheses and add a space because we wanna target this block, which is inside of the body. So now our block will be sticky when we're in edit mode, but not actively editing the page. And then when we're actively editing the page, you can see that I can move around the block like normal. There's no more offset. And as soon as I hit save and then exit, 
it'll appear sticky again. Now there are tons of use cases for using sticky blocks in Squarespace, which we didn't get into in this video, but hopefully this gives you enough of the basics to take this concept and implement it into your Squarespace site. And if you wanna watch more in-depth CSS for Squarespace videos like this, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.